Hello my fellow CAD lovers and welcome to part 3 of this tutorial on building a dynamic hexagonal screw in AutoCAD. In part 2, we added geometrical constraints to our base geometry in order to build in some design intent or intelligence to our otherwise term geometry. But right at the end, it was obvious that geometric constraints alone are not enough to fully define our model. To control the size and the proportion of our design, we will need a new type of constraints, the dimensional constraints. There are three types of dimensional constraints. Liner dimensions, like horizontal, vertical, or aligned, for the distance between objects. Then we will have angular dimensions, which will control the angle between objects. And finally, diameter and radial dimension for the size of arcs and cycles. Contrary to regular AutoCAD dimensions, if you change the value of a dimensional constraint, all the constraints on the related objects are automatically evaluated and your model is updated accordingly. When creating dimensional constraints for dynamic blocks specifically, it is often necessary to use helper geometries, aka construction geometries. This is what we are going to start here with to fully define these three arcs, which are in fact the intersection between the flats and the chamfer of the screw head in this side view. So let's zoom in first. Then we type L for line tool. First point somewhere like this, second point here, and right away a second line Note that here I could have used the polar tracking and the appropriate O snaps to create the lines at the exact location where I want them to be. But since we are working with constraints, let's use them. So now we select the constant constraint and for the first input, we press enter for the object option and select this line, then second input, this point. Enter to repeat the coincident constraint. Now this endpoint and this one. Now we will apply an horizontal constraint. Enter or the down arrow key to switch to the two points method. And first point this one. Second point this one. Enter to repeat the tool. Enter again for the two points input. And first point this one then second point this one next a vertical constraint enter or down arrow key for two points then the top end points of this line and this end point now line tool somewhere like this to here then coincident constraint this end point to one of these another one from the midpoint of this arc to this endpoint. Next, a parallel constraint between this line and this one. Hmm. I wonder if this can be simplified. What we want here is a way to control the location of this center point. Anyway, next, C for the cycle tool, somewhere like this. Then coincident constraint, the endpoint of this line first, then the center of the cycle. Now a concentric constraint, the arc first, then the cycle. Okay, we are almost done here. L for line tool, from here to here, then escape to cancel. Now coincident constraint again this endpoint to this one then another one enter for the object option then we select this line and for the second input this endpoint to finish a collinear constraint this line 
to this one and there we go finally we have reached the point where we are going to start adding dimensional constraints we can pick them directly from this tab but what I will do instead to benefit from a maximal graphic area is to close this block authoring palette then move the properties palette to the side like this and then finally expand the ribbon bar by clicking once or twice on this arrow okay all right now we are going to start with an angular dimension from the center line to this oblique line and click somewhere like this to place the dimension as you can see the value is 30 degrees if you have something else change it to 30 degrees also you should have one of these big arrow which indicates how the affected object will move if the value is changed since the center line is fixed only the oblique line can move we can set the number of creeps displayed by changing this value in the property palette. Also, another way to see how our geometry is updated when a dimensional constraint is changed is to load it in the test block window, which is accessible via this tool. The test block window is the proper environment to test dynamic blocks unlike what we have been doing so far. As you can see here, the only difference is that the angular dimension is not longer visible. To test a block, we have to activate it first, at least in the 2011 version of AutoCAD. I don't know how it behaves in newer versions. So we click once on it and as you can see, the blue arrow and a square dot are displayed. By clicking on the blue dot, we can change the value of the angle. I will enter 40 degrees. And now you can see how the geometry is updated. Let's zoom in this area. You can see how these details are still correctly updated. Note also that the construction geometry is visible. If nothing is done to correct that, it will also appear in our final product. Let's close the test block window and we are back to the block editor. We will add a construction cycle to control the location of the center point of this arc. So C for cycle, we draw it somewhere like this. Next, let's grab this line out of our way first. Then we will add a coincident constraint between this endpoint and the center point of this cycle. Okay. Next, a concentric constraint between this cycle and the big arc. In hindsight, maybe I should have directly connected the center point of the arcs to the endpoint of the respective lines. I cannot remember why I had to resort to this convolute and inefficient workflow, but here we are. Anyways, let's move on and we will now define our helper geometry as construction geometry so that it is not longer visible outside the block editor. For that, we are going to move to the manage tab and select this construction geometry tool and we will select this cycle this line this one this one this one and this cycle next we press enter to move to the next step now we have to choose between two options convert or revert we will choose the first one convert by using the down arrow key on the keyboard et voila the construction geometries appears in light dark dotted lines they should not longer be visible outside the block editor now let's go to the test block window to check that and as you can see it work let's close the test block window and we will next 
add more dimensional constraints okay first a vertical dimension and as you can see here we can either use point or object as inputs we press enter for the object option and select this line and click somewhere like this to place the dimension now we will rename this label to dia here so that it is easy to identify later now as you can see we have one grip available if it is not the case for you select the dimension expand this properties palette and change show properties to yes okay next another vertical dimension from this endpoint to this one and we place it like this we will rename it pitch p i t c h now an horizontal constraint between the midpoint of this line and the same for this one and we will rename it length and keep the value as it is another horizontal dimension from the midpoint of this line and the same for this one and we place it somewhere here we rename it thread underscore length for length then enter okay next a second angular dimension and we will select this line first then this chamfer line and place the dimension like so make sure that the value is 45 degrees okay next an horizontal dimension between the midpoint of this line and the midpoint of this one to define the head height and this time instead of leaving the value as it is we are going to use a formula to define it so here we will type 2 multiplied dia for diameter divided by 3 then press enter now you can see how the head is updated and instead of a value the formula is displayed this formula will ensure that no matter what diameter of screw we will have the screw head height will remain two-thirds of that value okay all right we have what we need for the side view so let's move to the right view here we will add a diameter dimension to this cycle and place it like so we will keep the label as it is but again we will replace the value by a formula like this 1.5 dia and this will be enough to finally fully define the head in both the front and the side views okay all right now let's see let's zoom on this corner and we will add an angular dimension between this vertical line and this one to actually fully define the head here this value should be 30 degrees so make sure it is okay now we are going to get back in the test block window and we will check how the screw behave now that we have added more dimensional constraints so z for zoom and first box select around the two views like so then only on the side view like this next we pan a little bit to the left now let's click on the block to show the creeps we drag this handle which is for the nominal diameter then type 12 millimeters and as you can see the model is perfectly updated everything is working just fine fantastic now let's change the length so we drag this then type 
40 millimeters. Let's zoom out for the moment. And we can see that the center lines are not longer properly adjusted in the side view here and in the front view. And the screw is now much longer. The thread length stayed unchanged. Let's keep checking. Now the thread length, we click and drag and it is working just fine. Back and forth. Now let's pan a little bit. We drag this again just for fun. Then this angle for the thread pitch and K in 1.5 millimeters. Okay, no problem so far. Now let's try this creep again for the nominal diameter to make it bigger. A little bit more. Now we are talking. Okay, now let's zoom out like this so that we have the two views visible and again we are going to activate the side view we grab this grip and type 150 then enter we change the thread pitch to three millimeters then the thread length okay enough falling around Let's take some time to summarize our observations. So far, our dynamic block is working pretty well, but we have to make two major improvements to make it even better. First one, as I pointed out earlier, the center lines do not currently update with the rest of our model. A couple of static dimensional constraints should be enough to take care of that. Second one and nonetheless major one, we need too many manual inputs to set up our screw to the desired size. This can lead to incorrect specifications due to typing errors and overall a very less enjoyable experience for the end user. We spent a lot of time creating this block and we want it to be fun and practical to use. So what we are going to do for that is to draw some inspiration from the real world where suppliers usually provide tables like this in the catalogs. In this one, for instance, you can see that there is only a discrete range of screw sizes offered from M5 to M36. For the thread length, two size are often available depending on if the screw length is below or above 125 millimeters. Other dimensions like this head height K, the width across flats S and then width across corner E are extracted from a standard which is here DIN 931 or ISO 4014. Same thing here and as you can see information can vary from one supplier to another. But what is to learn from that is we need to restrict as much as possible the variation of our model. Okay, so we are going to start by going back to the block editor and first we are going to make sure that our center lines update properly with the model. Let's close this block authoring palette first, then we will simply add an horizontal dimension from this midpoint to this one and place it like so. For the value, we will input 2 millimeters. Next, we zoom out and move to the left side. And then horizontal dimension from the midpoint of this line to the end point of the center line. We move and place it somewhere like this. And for the value, we will type D1 so that it shares the same value as the previous one. Okay, now let's zoom out and move to the front view. We focus on this area like this. 
horizontal dimension and again midpoint of this line to the end point of the center line we place it like so and type t1 again for the value next to finish with this zoom out and pan to the side and zoom in though on this corner this time a vertical dimension from this corner of the hexagon to this end point of the center line we place it and as you can guess it already the value should be d1 also okay all right now we are going to have to make sure that the two views will stay at a fixed distance from each other so back to the horizontal dimension from this end point to this one and the value should be 10 millimeter okay fantastic now before we move to the next step of this tutorial let's go back to the block test window to make sure that everything is still working fine as you can see when the diameter is increased both view are updated accordingly except for the pitch the shaft length and the thread length the distance between the views stay the same the center line are now in sync with the rest of the drawing which is nice okay now as you can see we have way too many creeps available for the end user we are only going to keep what is strictly required to make our block more enjoyable okay now back to the block editor and first z for zoom and rectangle select around the side view let's pan a little to the left okay let's make this property palette dark if it is not the case for you so first right click and deselect auto hide then right click again and select auto docking next grab it like this and snap it to the left like this and finally resize it like so okay now we are going to hide the unnecessary creeps first we select this dimension and in the miscellaneous section down in the bottom we choose no for show properties then zero for the number of creeps to display and escape to finish next this one show property to no and number of creeps to zero now let's speed this up by selecting multiple dimensions and next change show properties to no and number of creeps to zero escape to finish this set then we move to the right and we will focus on this area okay we select this angle drag it upwards like this then this one this dimension and change show properties to no and number of creeps to zero okay all right next we pan to the right like so and we select this one this angle the pitch and again show properties to no then number of creeps to zero okay i think for now it will be it but let's do some tests to be sure first we zoom to get the two view close to us and we select the block and as you can see only three creeps are now available this square is for the regular base point for all the blocks in AutoCAD so it doesn't count 
one one for the thread length next one the diameter and finally the scroll length nice notice how the thread length is preserved as the scroll length is changed so far so good everything is working fine and dandy the only thing which is missing is to control how the thread pitch is linked to the nominal diameter it is pretty standard to have two or three thread pitch for a specific nominal diameter for this reason we cannot use a formula or an equation as we did earlier instead we are going to use a table and i am going to show you how easy it is to set it up in the next and final part of this tutorial i hope i will see you there and again thanks for watching